Fantastic to have you back for what happens to be our 241st episode of Think Tech Hawaii's Human Humane Architecture. And you are our 12,911th uh, viewer. That was easy for me you, to remember because, Ron, that was one of your cars you drove in the past, which we will talk about when we return to automobiles and architecture. But as for now, we're in volume five of Midtown Flung, reporting on the new developments in the core of around Ala Moana Mall in Honolulu, Hawaii. And therefore, we have our transcontinental uh, triumvirate triangle back with you, Ron, in your Long Beach, California. Hi, Ron. Hello, everyone. And you, DeSoto, back in our Honolulu, Hawaii, in your Bishop Museum. I, DeSoto, and me, would you continue to wish so back uh, still near Munich, Germany? So let's get the first slide up. Uh, we're still in uh, the worst that we here in, uh, in, in Europe have seen in, since um, we caused such a mess not that long ago, a terrible war. Uh, in the Ukraine. And um, this is just some show quotes um, uh, of not the beginning of this year, but the beginning of last year. We were talking about the relationship of architecture and tyranny and for whom architects might want to work or not. And uh, uh, Wolf Pricks caught our attention, who um, in this uh, article here of this national newspaper that comes from this southern part of Germany, the Süddeutsche Zeitung um, titled it the, he, uh, titled him the poser for Putin, and architecturally uh, he blessed us with a BMW world, which you see at the very top right, which is a rather um, uh, excessivist building that tries to do the most with the most, and it tries so hard uh, to uh, I don't know have a dialogue with the opposite, which is Fry Otto's doing the least with the least uh, as a most essentialist approach. And that's his 72 Olympics that, as you can tell, uh, celebrates his 50th uh, anniversary uh, th this year. And uh, bottom left, uh, we've been uh, talking about Ursula von der Leyen quite a bit. And we've uh, been reporting that she used to be the Secretary of Defense of our country here. And when she moved on to become the President of the European Union, Little did she uh, know or wanted to believe that she would return to what she's done before with the military. Uh, this is a little, and now two weeks ago, because you kindly just sort of covered us last week, but this was just when she was visiting the butchering and butcher there, um, drove up via train uh, to uh, meet President Zelensky and to mourn uh, all, the, all the victims there. So, we so hope uh, this is going to end uh, soon and, and she can return to what she actually wanted to do is join the, uh, um, the, the, the leadership of the European Union in fostering what she calls the new European Bauhaus along the lines with uh, the Harris uh, Biden administration of the new Green Deal in addressing the challenges of our times that we almost tend to forget because we screwed up so badly as mankind, womankind with a climate that we need to fix that before we even think about taking time to fight each other. And that is reminds us that of the bottom right, uh, which is um, the uh, kindergarten for our hometown of Hanover that we were commissioned at the beginning of this now uh, a quarter into the first century of this new millennium. And we have our Hawaiian emerging uh, generation talent, Siraj and Chris here. And they were able to visit the director, Ms. Savitza, that you can see here uh, between them. And this building, uh, if I think about it, um, has been so ahead of its time and pioneering because not only was it addressing what we need so badly next winter here in Germany to uh, keep ourselves warm without relying on anyone else's resources, which is what a passive house does. But also this was in 2015 when Putin had already messed uh, with Syria and 
Ms. Savitza was happy, um, not about that, but she said what it caused is having Syrian refugees and their kids joining the kindergarten. And she said, the more the merrier. We're going to uh, discuss it out and we will find a solution for any problem. And um, we, we're going to basically uh, train ourselves and, and test uh, world peace here. So what a what a beacon for both of these kind of topics. And again, little did we know at the time we were doing this and we were talking about it. But that's the context that uh, Ron, we just before the show talked about high rises and how they relate to in you know there and here. But we save this for our intro for our next volume. Let's go to the next slide because returning to Honolulu, how are things there? This is us at um, uh, last time, having looked at what you see in the in the left of the bottom picture, which is the central Ala Moana, that then across the street, uh, there is the sky Ala Moana under construction, as you can see there. And we were a little suspicious uh, when half a year ago, uh, it was in that phase, now it's further up, which we see in two slides. But the, the kind of sills there, the balustrades, are a little too heavy for how we would like them. Uh, so, um, you know, because the, the character of the street is basically defined by something very bioclimatic that we show quote at the very top left. And I let you guys dwell on that. Gentlemen, are we still, do you hear us? Soto, I've, your voice is off. Uh, your your sound is off. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. So kick in with the monkey pot trees, please. <laughs> You're yeah, muted, De Soto. Yeah, I was just going to say that uh, uh, when we talk about these uh, new towers that are rising up in the Kakaoko region and around the Alamoana Center, uh, one of the reasons we don't care for them so much, just one of them, is that they're rather bland and they all look alike. Well, when you're driving down this particular portion of Kapiolani Boulevard, you can't see those towers. You are in a green tunnel, a canopy of green that is glorious. And in fact, my first experience of a canopy of green was when I took my great niece and great nephew to Kauai. And on Highway 520, which is just a portion of the trip from the airport to those southern resorts near uh, Foipu, uh, we hit this mile-long planting of eucalyptus trees that were planted apparently back in 1911. And for a solid mile, you've got these tall eucalyptus trees and this shaded tunnel to drive through, which again reminds me of my wonderful childhood in the Midwest, where in the summertime, all of us kids played in block after block after block of green tunnels because all of the elm trees grew together in maturity uh, with their branches intermingling amongst each other. And then one of the great ecological disasters of the mid Midwest was the sudden appearance of uh, Dutch elm disease. And a period of two years, I saw all of the elms in my hometown dead, cut and thrown away. Millions upon millions of such trees were lost in the Midwest. And DeSoto has made the, the point that if you rely on a sort of mono uh, culture of vegetation, you can set yourself up for a tremendous loss of losing all of one kind of plant. And that's certainly what happened there, changing the very nature of uh, sustainable and happy and shaded living in the Midwest. Yeah, and you can even experience the relevance, um, if you allow it, in an existential way um, of this shaded canopy here when you're not driving, as most people do, an enclosed air-conditioned car. But if you're doing it like our PI mobile that you enjoy riding in, Ron, and with a top-down, uh, we sometimes, if, uh, you know, right up to the red stop uh, lights, if that's in the sun, we don't stop there. If we don't have traffic behind us, we let ourselves fall back and stay under the canopy uh, and, and stay cool. So once again, only fossil fuel allows us to be ignorant 
of this one here. And so uh, of this great sort of inspiration and, and local sort of um, character. So um, let's hope that the developer, this developer finally picks up on that and gives us back some tropical exotic and that gets us to the next slide. Let's keep the fingers crossed. Yeah. I did the solo. Are you back with your audio by any chance? Can you hear, hear me? me? Can you hear we me? We can hear you. A little echoed, but Great. we're there. We prefer that or right. not. So over or not. Well, what we're looking at is a rendering of a view from the central building that we just were discussing. And this is sort of a fantasized view of what you might see. Well, unfortunately, what we are seeing is not what we like because we're seeing a room that is turned into a bakery because those glass walls mean that while the view is what is being touted here, this is the beautiful view you'll get, it means that the sunlight flows in unimpeded. And even if you were to put up curtains to keep out the direct sunlight, you're still heating the room because the radiant energy is still coming in there. And as you pointed out before we got started this morning, uh, Martin, it's preposterous that the bed in this bedroom has got this thick plush blanket folded over it because in the afternoon, this room is not going to need any type of blankets. You're gonna be frying in there even if you've got the AC blasting. We don't want people to be in rooms that are either being fried by the sun or being artificially chilled by the use of a lot of energy to make them cold. So what we're seeing is a pretty picture of a beautiful view that's taking nothing into account as to sustainability or livability of what this new building is creating. Yeah, and at least the person who rendered that was brutally honest by rendering that that shadow that the that's even the low sun of of you know the sunset sun coming soon but that is so brutally hot uh, even in germany I, I we used to have a a, a little a vacation uh, condo studio at the north sea in cuxhaven in germany where the building also had the wrong orientation and the sun was just like beating into it when it was setting and it was just unbearable hot and that was at the North Sea, and the North Sea isn't anywhere as close as heat problematic as, as Hawaii is. So that's just like one, one more of these, uh, boo and unfortunate, and let's go to the next slide. And that's another catch of your DeSoto, that picture. Yeah, this is in the sales office for the Sky Building, which is now under construction across the street from the Central. The Sky Building, or actually it's a complex of two buildings, and the one on the left is the condos, and the one on the right is condos, which are purportedly affordable on the bottom, and the rest of the building is a hotel. And they're proudly saying that the condo side, the West Tower, is sold out. So that means that all those condos have been purchased. Well, one of the things that we're about to talk about is how affordable is this really, as well as the tower on the, on the left, which is the condo part, has lanines. The tower on the right does not. Now, perhaps they're thinking that this hotel is not going to be used because of its location by vacationers as much as business people who theoretically don't want a lanai or a balcony to go out on? We don't know. But again, we have our criticisms. Yeah, absolutely. Next slide, to further that criticism, this is the plan that we're able to uh, find. Um, it is the same old 20th century double loaded corridor. It's a suffocating one because you don't get any cross ventilation there. And then this sort of new old trick that the Alamoana building was introducing a half a century ago um, is getting light at, into this tunnel uh, hallway from the side is sort of minimized here to this little mouse hole window that's between the elevator uh, shafts there. And so there's probably not enough to really bring significant light in this one here. And also we see uh, that the, the photograph of under construction is from the website of the developer. So it shows how far the building is. It's probably we, uh, we estimated like two thirds up. And uh, uh, above there, we can see a uh, exonometric uh, explosion drawing uh, of a unit. 
And so once again, uh, we see something that we don't want to see, but we were afraid to see again. And we call this the BB. And what is that, Ron? Um, baked room. Yeah, it's not Brigitte Bardot. So you don't have to see it, Ron, to talk about it. But it's once again giving which room the most uh, fixed glazing without any uh, shading. It's the bedroom. So oh, that's what we call them. The exactly. baked bedroom. Exactly. That's yeah. right. <laughs> so uh, next slide. Uh, that's from you, DeSoto. Uh, once again, you were reading the news, and this is the Star Advertiser some while ago, and you sent this to me, and I put it in there. And in our discussion, I basically uh, said to you, what is there to bless? And you please tell me, because it's your culture, and you know which things and when one blesses. Well, well it's, it's always, always been traditional, traditional. in a lot, a lot of, of cultures, cultures, and certainly in Hawaiian, Hawaiian cultures as well. There were... Uh, types, types of blessings, blessings and or rituals that you performed at the construction of a new structure. Now, in traditional times, this was not a Christian blessing of uh, necessarily good things. People were sacrificed at times for the construction of new buildings. Well, we don't do that anymore, unfortunately. Uh, we do have Christian-based blessings. And the question is, yes, how much of a blessing is this for our community in terms of who it's providing the shelter for, and how are they able to afford it? And we're going to talk about that in just a second. Yeah, and also as we already analyzed, it's how one bless something that's basically against your environment, right? Against your climate. Yeah, it's invasive. Yeah. So you want to bless something invasive? Maybe not. Uh, where is the sacrificing lamp? You know, that's <laughs> discussion that's right. you're starting here. So uh, next slide is uh, something, again, from the developer's uh, renderings. And what are we looking at? And how is this context-wise, guys? Well, we are seeing the usual parking plinth at the bottom of the two towers. And the parking plinths to us are an unfortunate part of how buildings are constructed these days. First of all, these buildings are being built in this area because of the plan uh, termination of the train system at Alamoana Center. That is up in the air right now because of financial discussions. It's not totally off the page. It's to not totally gone, but it is something that's going to continue to have to be worked on. And even under the best circumstances, we're not going to see that built until 20, open and built until 2031, they're now staying. So in the meantime, people are still using cars, and cars take up a lot of space. At the bases of buildings, we see the parking plinth, which houses all the automobiles, and these vehicles usually are shielded from view from the outside through decorative metal screens or some kind of other decorative facade. And so that's what we see in the rendering here above Kapiolani Boulevard. Pointed out, however, before in our previous discussion that at nighttime this all reverses because the interiors of the parking buildings are illuminated and so all of the cars are visible when you're going past at night. So that shading and that uh, covering up doesn't go there. But another thing is that this decoration or what might be nice to live with doesn't get used for where people live. It gets used for inanimate objects, which are our vehicles. Uh, again, something we've discussed a great many times in the past about the reuse of parking space for potentially housing people. Yeah, or in new developments, reverse the whole thing, as you said, reversing. Cars don't mind, and we don't have to be ashamed. If we have cars, don't be ashamed of them. We have a show going on talking automobiles architecture. We love both. And uh, the cars don't mind being out there in the easy breeze, and the people wouldn't mind being under these um, under these screens here as Top Right King Center does very uh, successfully ever since Takashi Anvi built it mid-century um, or even at the top left, even the central, the previous project has that, but in a place where it's pretty much performatively useless between the units and the parking, it should be where the people get baked. So like the BBs might wanna be screened with these. But never mind, they're not. So next slide is also lifting uh, basically the secret of another hope we had. 
This is the pricing of the unit. And maybe Ron, you want to talk about that also as far as the affordability? Yeah, again, we're talking about the, the Sky Moana project, the two towers we've been, we've been looking at. Uh, the developer was required to provide something called, quote, affordable housing, unquote. Uh, that's a very relative term. I think there, in, in reality, it was more a matter of maybe something that was uh, a sort of uh, moderately priced, but even moderately priced here, for, you know, this is not housing for uh, poor people who can't afford anything decent. When uh, the, the 84 units in the bottom floors of the East Sky Tower were called flats. And for example, a two bedroom flat would still cost about $800,000. And interestingly enough, affordable housing, you know, should have some limits. Uh, but here, because the median uh, uh, amount of money that people make in Hawaii is really pretty high, in this case, the developer said that in order to be able to apply for one of these moderately priced so-called affordable units, that you could not earn more than 120% of Honolulu's medium income. Well, that income at the moment is $84,400. You multiply that by 12, 120%, and that means you could make $100,000 a year and still be able to get and, and reserve one of these units. Uh, that is, again, another indication of the housing crisis. People making $100,000 a year are not poor by any means. This is not affordable housing for the poor and those who desperately need decent and safe and humane housing. Yeah, that meaning flat that makes them fall flat on their face. And, and another, another thing that is really disturbing is the East Tower doesn't have any balconies at all. So in other words, the people that are supposed to be getting a good deal from the developer in terms of moderately priced or affordable housing they have to live confined completely indoors behind hermetically sealed glass. And also the, uh, the, the 300 hotel rooms <laughs> above that, the visitors there are also confined to being completely indoors, cut off from the gorgeous tropical weather. Yeah, and yeah, as you said, the solo, maybe for the business traveler, maybe not so much of a problem, but for a permanent dweller, uh, on the lower part of the food chain. And then almost ironically, satirically, they're looking at the knives just across in, in the other tower. That is, you know, that's, that's pretty cynical. Uh, our colleagues from the Star Advertiser were doing a good job uh, in their article. This is the second page of it here on the, on the right side of our slide here. At the top right, they're recalling the um, the former uh, preoccupation of the building, and that's the Kenrock building by uh, Frank Haynes, uh, founding principal of Architects Hawaii. We've been talking about that in the previous shows. And next slide. While I think it's no secret uh, for our viewers that you, the solo, are not particularly religious, but you always have your faith up high for things. And I snapshotted this one here because I think you were praying for something that would have been genius to basically, since there are two towers, right? And there are two courtyards. One can put two and two together and maybe would, could have placed the towers in the courtyards and then could have uh, used the uh, existing building as the plinth of the building. How about that? And does that sound like totally unimaginable? No, next slide, uh, because uh, this is time travel back to uh, when you look at the picture number two, the uh, top uh, second from top left, uh, this is Martin who had hair uh, when he was defending um, his, uh, his final project, his, his thesis project in front of his professor, who you see uh, left uh, of me on number one, this is Manfred Schomas. And he uh, turned to me some years later and he said, uh, Martin, I really, really, I don't know how you did this because uh, your even more important project, way more than your thesis, was Joey. He was just born. 
and his stomach wasn't quite uh, uh, entirely developed. So he was expressing that and he was, uh, you could say maybe cheerleading me and yelling all the time. And he said, I don't know how you were able to still focus. No one else was. And thinking about it, maybe that was our strategy. I don't know. But uh, anyway, so uh, what does this have to do with us here? To the, to the right of me on number three is my other professor, Peter Peshwega that I then started working for while being in school. And the office had just won a tower project uh, that was called the Hessische Landesbank um, and, um, or the Mine Tower. And the Mine Tower, we were able to get up on with my uh, Tiki basement expert friend, Stefan, this summer. We were able to go up uh, into the tower and talking about uh, fenestration and facades uh, that we're increasingly critical of uh, glass curtain walls in our Hawaii here, uh, we actually might increasingly need them and especially uh, double them up as a, as, a, as a double facade because comes next winter, we might not have Putin's oil anymore to keep ourselves warm. So maybe these uh, double facades come into fashion again. Um, he uh, here wasn't successful with that. They got value engineered out. And instead, he developed something that you guys found interesting. And we see that at the picture number six at the bottom left, uh, on the left side of it, there's something popping out. And uh, what intrigued you guys about that? Well, I'm assuming we were discussing the utility and uh, usefulness of windows that can be opened in some manner. And in some cases, uh, windows, windows and high rises, rises can be cracked open at the bottom, bottom which, as, as you pointed out, Martin, Martin, is not useful if you're trying to vent hot air out of a room. Hot, hot air rises, rises, it should be going out of the top of, the, of these windows, and it can't if the window is only open on the bottom. But you're saying this window, it looks like the entire thing can go out straight. And while that's wonderful for venting hot air, you pointed out that when it rains, that's not necessarily going to be useful because rain is going to come in. So maybe in an ideal world, the window could go out straight or it could tilt out at the top or it could tilt out at the bottom. And knowing how clever the Germans are at engineering, I bet they could invent a window to do that. No, we're happy to help. And this probably has a rain sensor to make that work. But what we actually want to majorly point out here is another feature of the building that we see at the bottom right. And what is that about? That has to do with a Kenrock building or could have. Well, you said that this is a historic building which was standing on the site and the facade of this building was retained. It kept down at street level, even though the interior was gutted and redone entirely. I don't know how old this building was or is, but if it managed to survive World War II in Germany, then that makes it uh, pretty historic. So while I'm not, it may not be ideal to have taken out all of its interior, uh, at least the facade is still there, therefore, Potentially, the Kenrock building could have been saved to have become the base of the sky complex, but it didn't happen. Unfortunately not. And how that story continues to unfold along Kapiolani Boulevard, we have to save for next week in our volume six of Midtown Flunk. And until then, please stay increasingly essentialist versus excessivist and stay peaceful, most importantly. Yeah. Yeah, Bye guys, see you all next week. Aloha. Aloha. Bye. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.